There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Yes, it is. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. There. No ball of meat. No light in the formless nothing. Just nice women. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. All right, nothing town to fuck all, Borough. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting. Longing. Dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A terrible mistake. 
Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. It's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Little black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a first discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Whatever it is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? There might have been, ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late, like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. 
It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Like the green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Good, they're balanced, comfy, feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told.